Greetings all, it's the unpaid intern back to share his views on whatever has been happening in F1. Now, by the time you're watching this or hearing this, the British Grand Prix would have already happened. Now, to me, there are many takeaways from this race. You know, Formula One's recent uplift in on-track action has been nothing short of brilliant these past two weeks with Austria and the battle between Leclerc and Verstappen for the win there and that battle continuing in this race. There's also Valtteri Bottas and what was a resurgence in form by getting pole and surviving a brief wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with teammate and world champion Lewis Hamilton. But to me, my major takeaway from this weekend above all would have to be what is clearly Sebastian Vettel's downfall. Now, before you turn off this video in anger of what I said, I'd like to reinforce my views that Vettel is still an elite driver in F1 and could easily wipe the floor with half of the current roster, but his recent dip in form has been a talking point ever since the 2018 season, where he had a great start to the season. He won Australia and he won Bahrain, and the combination of him and his Ferrari were pretty good at that point. Vettel, I mean, obviously... Hamilton was still pressuring him and stuff, but Vettel was showing some serious, you know, firepower as it resulted in on-track action between him and Hamilton, and he was showing some serious strength on track, and then Germany happened, literally one race after he defeated Mercedes in Silverstone, in the British Grand Prix. He was leading the German Grand Prix, his home race by the way, and skid off the track because of rain and DNF. And it was a DNF that he took to heart. And looking at where Vettel is right now, and that incident he had with Max Verstappen where he basically took him out of the race, it's amazing how both of them were even still in it at the end of the race, in my opinion. But looking at that and looking at the germany incident ever since that dn and that to me is where this began for vettel ever since that dnf in germany sebastian vettel has not been the same driver to me we're talking about a four-time world champion here a man who won 13 races in 2013 i believe nine straight at one point Won, the f won his first championship in 2010 against Mark Webber and Fernando Alonso and you know the giants of F1 at the time till he became a giant of F1 during his Red Bull days but we look at Germany and ever since then man the constant spin outs he's had the one at Italy the one at Japan the one at USA not to mention his mess up at Bahrain earlier this year when he was in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with Hamilton and he spun out, he lost the car. I've heard a lot of people on social media saying that Sebastian Vettel should retire or get a sports psychologist because he obviously is lacking the mental fortitude to battle giants on F1, you know, wheel-to-wheel -wheel anymore. And... I don't think Sebastian Vettel should retire unless he obviously doesn't want to be in F1 anymore because if that's the case then you can't force the man to stay. If he doesn't want to be here, he doesn't want to be here. But he's shown no signs of not wanting to be here in my opinion. It's just obviously I don't think he's had such a shocking, you know, dip in form no wins ferrari are still winless in 20, 2019 sorry and you know vettel i haven't seen vettel this dejected since the 2014 season the year after he won his fourth title and daniel ricardo had come to red bull and was you know making waves won three races that year vettel had a terrible season by his standards he didn't win a single race i mean yeah he got podiums and stuff but the Vettel we knew in 2013 was not the Vettel in 2014. No luck and simply just didn't have a car under him that could win. Or at least he couldn't win because Ricardo obviously was. But looking at Vettel now, 
it's safe to say that Mercedes probably still have the best car on the grid right now. But Ferrari have had opportunities to win. Vettel himself, let's face it, um, if the Canada thing didn't happen, Vettel would have had a win by now. But I don't think that's, that would have been enough for me to think that Vettel has, you know, recovered from this this dip in form that he's had because let's face it Leclerc has been more impressive this season I mean Vettel had the mess up in France in qualifying I'm pretty sure that wasn't his fault Silverstone qualifying I have no idea what happened there there's still no real explanation for you know why he qualified so low Australia if we look back at every race this year Australia it's safe to say Ferrari just didn't have the car under him didn't give Vettel the car to be competitive, which is fine. Bahrain, we all know what happened there. The spin out with Hamilton. China, again, they just weren't on. They just haven't been on Mercedes. They haven't. They don't have Mercedes pace. It's, it's been a very disappointing season for Vettel and Ferrari. It's just, I don't know. I think at this point, as it regards Sebastian Vettel. I mean, I don't really, I actually don't know what to say because, again, at the end of the day, we're talking about a four-time world champion, and it's just, to see him struggle this much on track, it's, it's very shocking, but it's not even the fact that he's struggling, it's that it, most of the incidents he's been in are his fault, Loki. I mean, we can argue about the Canada thing all we want. I still don't really... I mean, I still kind of accept the stewards' decision even though I feel like they were a bit too harsh on him because at that point in time, there wasn't really much for him to do. But the Bahrain incident really stuck out to me. You know? I don't really know what to say. I think as it regards Sebastian Vettel, I don't think... Ferrari should just push Charles as the number one driver right now. I think his, I think Ferrari's main thing right now is to not care about the drivers' championship because that's gone forever. That's not being won again this year. Neither is the constructors at this point. What they need to do is just try to win any race that they're they're entering from this point on. At, you know, try a different strategy. Do something different. You know what I mean? Because this whole this whole thing that they're doing right now is not working out. They do not have... I shouldn't say they don't have the car. They do have the car in some cases. I mean, there's some tracks that Ferrari are faster than Mercedes at. Bahrain was a perfect example of that when Leclerc got the pole. You know, him and Vettel were battling for the beginning of that race. And Mercedes basically couldn't couldn't really respond to them until Leclerc had his engine problem. Same thing in Canada with Vettel scoring his only pole of the year so far and pretty much having Hamilton won until he made that mistake going into the turn and, you know, receiving that penalty. But going back to Vettel, it's it's very sad to see, you know, him having to apologize every race and stuff like that. It sucks because... 2017 when Ferrari finally emerged as, you know, a proper title contender to Mercedes as it regarded the Drivers Championship. 2017 Vettel was good. I mean, he lost the championship basically because of the Singapore crash, which wasn't necessarily his fault. I mean, he wasn't 100% off the hook, but there were many other factors that caused that incident. And then there's the Japan failure that basically took him out of contention. But even then, Vettel didn't look bad in defeat. In 2018, he looked bad in defeat because he had the championship in his hands. He had won Britain and he just he throws it away in Germany. He spins out in Italy, spins out in Japan, spins out in USA. And Kimi Raikkonen to this day is still the last person to win a race for Ferrari. And that's, that's bad in my opinion, because Vettel is the guy. He is their guy at Ferrari. And to see him struggle like this isn't really all that good. And you could argue that maybe even Vettel's struggles have helped Charles Leclerc become a better driver. Because, 
as of late, the man's been on the podium for the last four races, and that's that's pretty amazing for somebody with as little experience up front as he does have, you know. Leclerc has been amazing, especially in Britain. I mean, he was battling with Verstappen all race, and I don't think they made contact once. But the one time Vettel races wheel to wheel with Verstappen, he ends up taking himself and Verstappen out and has to apologize after the race again. I think I'm going to end it here because I, I actually I came into this video thinking I would have come up with a solution for Vettel's struggles, but I haven't, you know? It's weird because if he makes clean overtakes and doesn't win, people are still going to, you know, berate him and say he doesn't have it anymore. And when he does something outrageous and messes up, people will berate him even more. But I think Vettel should, you know... I, I actually don't know what Vettel should do. Yeah, there you have it. I don't know what Sebastian Vettel should do. I really don't. Obviously, keep racing for the rest of this season. Maybe next season. I don't really know what his plans are, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's actually it. I don't know what to say. Bye, everybody.